Hello. Right, we're just going to rebuild this caliper. New seals. So I'll put some of this red. My hands out right clean, they should be clean. You don't want any, you don't really want to get any grease on there. I should have done the back one first. Anybody else got a snotty cold? I get some of that red and you put your fist. This is the back. One's a seal and one's a dust seal. A um, bit awkward to get in, and you obviously don't want to kink them. But I suppose, as well as you can see that's in now, look. As well as not, um, I've already greased this one. And you, you can sort of feel the groove where they go. It's just a matter of making sure they're flush. Sometimes if you've got some uh, in, the, in the channels where the um, that's the heat coming on, it is cold, in fact it blinking freezing. So always buy, always buy new seals. Again, red grease. Round the seal. Uh, oh, most worst bit is just making sure it all goes in nice and flush and if you don't uh, that's gone and you can feel it popping and it like I say if you don't get the channels cleaned out properly they don't sit flush which is not much use because they need to be sat right so that when the piston moves up and down or in and out whatever you want to call it um, it's a smooth movement, it's not catching um, if it's sort of not sat in the channels right good it might more than likely rub on the piston and maybe not be as efficient so These were bought from, if you can rub your finger around, you just feel if they're sat in. You usually can tell when they've gone in, you just, they just pop right. Um, so anyway, that's that bit. Just wipe some uh, grease off the fingers. So next job is to put the pistons in. And this is a bit of an awkward one. What I do, I'm not sure whether you should be putting a bit of grease on here, but as long as there's no grease on the back, 
where the oil will push the piston out. So to get that in place just a bit. And we use a, or I use a C clamp, which is one of these. A bit of wood on the back of it. And then basically, you see clamp in there, piece of wood behind, lined up, and then you tighten in your C clamp up. Once it gets near, then you can line it, line it back up. But sometimes it starts to go in a bit untrue. So far off now. Ah, I think that's uh, certainly getting it now. That's it. If you're lucky, they go straight in. Ah, oh, right, it's just just twisted slightly there. So take up this slack again. And I think we not so far off. Once you get it straight then the C clamp will do the work for you but the obviously important thing make sure before you start twisting and winding in make sure it's straight or near, near as straight as you can and then when it's guided in it'll straighten itself up I just take it right back um, for now once these calipers are rebuilt then it's a case of uh, getting it on the bikes and a bleed through and getting them functioning very as they're meant to be so that's one piston same with the next bit of silicon grease whatever it is red rubber grease I suppose you want someone anyway of a sort of a moving part but it is sealed you shouldn't get any dust and rubbish in here so again I put a piece of wood at the back there so we don't start denting caliper or putting ring marks on it from the um, from the C clamp I suppose there's a tool for this but if you saw my last video, I did mention I'm a Yorkshire man. When we're getting the pistons out, there's tools to get the pistons out. Um, but I found that if you put an Allen key in and a, I think it was a 10 mil drill bit, it would sort of lock together as you turned it and help to get it out ah, so there we go you, you sort of feel it when it when it finds itself once it finds its way in it's a piece of cake then look but that like I say the secret is to get it well it's not a secret it's obvious just make sure it's straight before you start winding in and then it'll uh, it's no effort at all because it's guiding itself Unwind that now. I won't need that C clamp again now because we've done the other the other caliper is pretty much built. So we'll put the C clamp away. Quick little wipe around there. That wood's no longer needed. Um, the one we've already built so it's ready to go back on I think there's just the the bleed nipple to go on which is there
Right. So that one's completed. I've looked in the Haynes book. The trouble is with Haynes, they, they cover quite a lot of models in one book. Uh, for me, probably what they'd be better off doing. I mean, most of the stuff same as, you know, why they covered all the same models. But sometimes they have different calipers on and various other bits. And they, do a, they don't do a detailed breakdown of your particular caliper. They do a bit of a breakdown of each one. But I like to see, you know, because this bike has got, I think it's pretty much got all st standard parts on it. Um, so for me, I'd rather have a Haynes manual, what went into a bit more detail. And then if you had the other bike, mind you, I suppose you'd be buying a whole book just for the caliper, I suppose, but I don't know. Right, so here we go. Question is, can I remember how to do it? So that. So we've got a rubber missing. Where's that rubber? That's what we want. There we go. So that slots through. So that slots through there. I think this grease or oil or something like that is marvellous stuff when you get a rebuild kit you can get all these little bits of stuff as well all these rubbers um, and what have you but I found they weren't too bad when I took them off it can be a bit of a challenge can this You'll find when people do these videos, situations like this, they'll turn the video off and then they'll make it look easy. I suppose a, a bit of an airline or something, you should help it through me. Wonderbar! I'm going to turn the video off. See you in a bit. Diddy! What a pain that one. Other one went in fine. As it always does, when you start doing it on camera, it never goes to plan. Anyway, that's in. So this bit, bit of grease again. And that bit, it's got like a, on this it's got like a key system. So it locks in. That slots in there, so that basically is your calier, cal <laughs> caliper, sorry about that, I won't take it Mickey, I won't take it Mickey out of myself, uh, caliper hanger, yep, I think, I was just taking the Mickey out of me being a bell end. All. Right, so, so far, so good. Put the little spring down. Now, I can never remember which way these go around. I think the last one, I put it that way, so we'll stick to that plan of action. Um, I'm going to clean these. These brake pads are pretty new. Normally you'd put new pads in, I know. But uh, look at look at look how much is on these. I'm not throwing them away. Here. So 
that's that that goes there this one that little hooky bit goes on the end there then we've got the pins I just put a bit of uh, grease on the shaft I put the uh, where the threads were I just put some paper in just to stop rubbish getting in so what I do is I which I had to do with the other one is get it going through one brake pad and then through the other brake pad a little bit so that holds that one a bit steady thing is if you've got grease on your fingers always keep your fingers wiped and just make sure you don't touch the brake contact points and then once you get that one in place you should hopefully be able to push it right in so that one's in and that one's in now we'll just tighten them up now a bit don't tighten them up fully I do all that when it's on bike so I'll just put a bit of silicon round the thread got a little bit of my finger there look, and I just put it on the thread as I turn it and it just winds into the system into the caliper right there we don't we're not put, setting them all up to the right torque or the tension and stuff we just putting things in the place probably the longest video I've ever done right anyway it's time to wrap up I think now so only thing we've got now is the banjo bolt which goes in there again a bit of paper there stopping it keep getting in so we'll put the banjo bolt in there and now we need some um, copper washers and all that but they'll be put on when I get it over the where the bikes are because the bikes are um, in the garage and that's where the copper that might not have been a good idea that's where the copper um, copper washers are I always found that doing stuff like this it's always much better if you have a like a methodical approach oh, excuse me that way there's some sort of uh, organization going on it definitely helps when you're reassembling stuff as I've found out the hard way in the past anyway there you go that's two calipers installed for you uh, rebuilt rather with new seals that's all we haven't put anything else on um, so there you go thank you very much see you again just before we do finally go this is Sky my little helper say hello Sky hello little chihuahua hey there you go say hello <laughs> she's like to come and sit in its shed with me especially when I've got the heating on but yeah 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 say hello to see you next time 
see you next time. Bye. Right, stupid, I think, right?